Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing great. We are in the kitchen today making one of my favorites, lemon butter chicken with spinach. Now I know maybe you don't like lemon, maybe you don't like spinach, maybe you don't even like chicken. Well, if you don't like chicken, there's really no way around this one. So I don't even know why you would have clicked on the video, but glad you're here nonetheless, welcome. If you decide though to move ahead with this recipe, and I think you should, even if you're not a big fan of some of the items, this is going to be a great option to have when you're having guests over because it's cheap, it is easy to make, and it tastes delicious even for the people that don't like low carb. You know, that's one of the things I try to do for you guys. Find things that are great for the low carb crowd, but also taste pleasing to the taste buds of the regular eaters, right? And this accomplishes that today. So go ahead, wash your hands, and let's get started on making lemon butter, chicken, and spinach. Time to meet the cast of characters for the lemon butter, chicken with spinach. Obviously, we've got chicken. Now we've got bone in, skin on, chicken thighs. That's what we're gonna be using for this recipe. It's got that good, healthy fats, dark meat, gonna taste delicious. For our seasonings and our accoutrement, we have smoked paprika, one tablespoon, salt and pepper for the chicken in a minute. You'll see what we do with that. Three tablespoons of butter, three cloves of garlic, minced, half a cup of heavy cream, one cup of chicken broth. We've got one lemon that we're gonna juice. We've got a quarter cup freshly grated Parmesan and one teaspoon of thyme. Also, fresh from the garden, we've got spinach. So that's all you need. All you need to make this amazing dish, which is what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna move over to the stove top and I will see you guys over there. Before you even get started, the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Second, you want to set your burner to medium high. And what we're going to do is melt our butter first. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video on cast iron, you should really check it out. Today, we're going to be using the enameled cast iron, the Dutch oven specifically. I love this because, as I said in the video, you can just throw these in the dishwasher. You don't have to worry about washing them by hand cleaning them like you do the high maintenance of the regular cast iron. These are really, really great. There's enamel on the outside and they're coated on the inside as well. So we're gonna put this on a medium high heat and we are going to take our three tablespoons of butter and let that start melting. Now, while we let this melt, we wanna keep an eye on it because you don't want it to burn. Uh, that can actually happen with butter and then it's, it's not that it's necessarily ruined like it would be if you burned garlic, which is probably the worst, but you just wanna keep an eye on it. We're just gonna melt this, get it good and simmering because our chicken is gonna go into this. Now, speaking of that, let me put this over here and I'm going to go ahead and season my chicken. Now, this is very dangerous. This is the first time I'm doing this and I probably shouldn't do it on camera, but <gasps> miracle of miracles. So we're going to take our paprika and we are just going to season the skin of the chicken thighs. This is not anything difficult or crazy. It is literally what it looks like. We're just seasoning the outside. And if you have a little leftover, that's fine. Um, you don't have to go paprika crazy. And if you don't have any paprika, you can substitute chili powder. That works okay. We are going to also add salt and pepper just to your liking, I just like to give a little sprinkling to each piece of chicken to let it know it's important. There we go. And our fresh ground pepper. Now I use fresh ground pepper for two reasons. One, because it tastes great, and two, because it's dramatic. But clearly, you can use regular ground pepper from the container if that's all you've got. Not a problem at all. All right, so that's really all we're gonna do with our chicken breasts, uh, our chicken thighs, excuse me. And we're just gonna go ahead and press these seasonings in like so. There we go. And then we are going to check on our butter. Move this out of the way, it sounds like it's coming along. And it is. 
Luckily it hasn't burned yet, so we're just gonna give this a good little stir. It's looking really good. Now here's what I like to do. When you're using a Dutch oven, uh, you can take the handles and just swirl your butt around because the chicken is gonna be a little crowded in there. Normally we don't like to do that, but it's gonna be okay. Don't sweat it. I just like to give it a nice little coating inside. And then I'm gonna take our chicken and we're gonna start off skin side down. And we are going to cook both sides of the chicken until it is nice and golden. And that is going to be about three minutes per side. But you're really just gonna have to eyeball it and see when it looks about like it should. And I'll show you so you can have a reference of what it's gonna look like, or what it should look like rather. So there we go. We're saying adieu to these poor little chickens, but we are very thankful they are gonna give us nourishment. In the meantime, we're gonna burn them. So I'm gonna give these a few minutes to cook, wash off this nasty stuff, wash my hands, and I'll be right back. All right, these have been going now for a few minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over and see. And that is just how you want them to look. Nice and golden. Now we're gonna move this over to the oven, so obviously keep in mind, these are not done by any means. But this is exactly how you want the first round of the outside cooking to look. There we go. And we're just gonna let the other side go for another probably three or four minutes, and we'll check that, and then we should be ready for the next step. All right, let's go ahead and take a look and see how the bottoms are coming out. Perfect, this is how you want it to look. So you just want it to be nice and golden on both sides, as you can see there, all right? So what we're gonna do is go ahead and take your chicken out, put it to the side for a moment, and we're gonna use, that one's tricky, and we're gonna use the juices left over for the next step. You'll have to excuse the sound of the vent. It's got a little smoky. All right, we'll turn that off now. All right, so we've got our chicken set aside. We've still got our burner on. I'm gonna put mine down to about a five medium or so. Uh, and I'm gonna take first my chicken broth. Give that a little bit of stir. We're gonna pour this in. And then we are going to take our garlic and put that in to cook. Now, let me tell you why I do it this way. A lot of people just put the garlic straight in. When you're using a Dutch oven, it can get pretty warm in there and it's gonna retain a lot of that heat. And garlic burns fast. And you know that if you burn garlic, it is all over. So I like to put the broth in to kind of give it a little bit of a buffer and not hurt the garlic as much. Uh, and I only let it go for a few seconds until it's fragrant. So just about like now. And then we're gonna add our cream and we're gonna stir, stir, stir because we don't want our cream to also give us any problems. Put that in there. There we go, that cools it down quite a bit. So we're gonna let this mix for a bit and we're gonna return this to a boil. Uh, and what we're gonna do in the meantime is we're gonna add our lemon. So I've got our, and that's gonna come to a boil pretty quickly. So you have to kind of work fast. Put in the lemon juice here. I know that was a very graceful squeezing of the lemon, but I ain't got time to make it look fancy. There we go. All right. And then we're gonna give that a quick little stir. And then we are going to add our thyme. All right. There we go. So we've got the dried thyme. It's gonna mix in there. It smells so good. It's so fragrant. I love when you mix thyme and garlic and all these great seasonings together. It just so, so wonderful. Then we're gonna add our Parmesan. And this is already coming back up to a boil. So what we're gonna do when that happens is we are gonna add our fresh spinach from the garden and it is going to wilt. Now, you're gonna think you're adding, if you're new to spinach, you think you're adding a whole damn garden's worth of spinach. And in about five seconds, you're gonna wonder where the hell it all went because it's gonna wilt, wilt, wilt. But that's okay, that's what we want. And what we're also gonna do while this is happening 
is turn this down to about a low, right? So just turn your heat down to a low. Again, your cast iron's gonna retain a lot of that heat anyway, so you really don't need to have it any higher. And we're just gonna give this a stir, probably for about another two to three minutes until that spinach is good and wilted. And then I'm gonna do this on this end. I'm not gonna bore you with watching the cooking version of paint dry but I will be back in just a second and we will go with our final steps before moving this whole operation into the oven. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes. This is what you want your spinach to look like. It has wilted. Now, I added a bag. I should have said this earlier. This was about two cups. Um, that's what I've discovered. If you buy a bag from the grocery store of the spinach or the baby spinach, spinach works better on this, I would say, than the baby spinach. It just wilts down to almost nothing. Um, but a bag should be plenty for the serving amounts that we're using. So we're gonna put our spoon aside and we're gonna return our chicken back to the pot. Nestle it in. I put it in skin side up because it looks prettier. There we go. You can't really mess that up though. We're gonna make one more room or make room for one more rather. There we go. And then I wanna just take some of this spinach from the bottom and layer over the chicken, just a little bit of it, just to get everything nice and mixed together, like so. Now, the oven that is going at 400 is where this is headed. We're gonna go ahead and turn our burner off and we're gonna take the entire pot or skillet, if you're using a skillet, just make sure it's oven safe, and we're gonna transfer this over to the oven. It's gonna cook in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes, but what I do, and you guys know if you've seen my videos before, always use a thermometer so that you know when your chicken comes up to the right temperature. Preferably you want to use one that you can have in the oven while the dish is cooking. That way you can monitor it from the outside. You don't have to keep opening the oven, opening the oven, letting all that heat out, right? So we're going to move this to the oven, let it cook for 25 to 30 minutes, and then we're going to finish up on the back end. Okay, so it's about 30 minutes later. It took about a good 30 minutes for it to come up to that 165 degree mark. We've pulled it from the oven. It is here. I've let it cool down for about 10 minutes or so. It could probably go for a little bit longer, but we're hungry, so time to go ahead and get it going. This is what it should look like. You've got your spinach nice and cooked and wilted, your sauce all around it, the chicken thighs. So we're just gonna pull one out here and plate it so you can see how this should look. We're gonna put a chicken thigh here. Now we're using oversized plates that are way bigger than the chicken breast so that we can simulate that fancy restaurant look where it's just like a small piece of meat and the fancy sauce drizzled all over and it's like $80. That's what we're replicating today for not quite that much money. So see, we just put the sauce all dramatically like, like that and then clean this up as we plate it. And then you wanna get a nice bit of the spinach, but it really, like I said, combines so nicely. It makes a very buttery flavor with just a hint of the lemon and you've got your spinach on the side and voila. And in addition to this, you could also pair this with another side. So if you want to have some broccoli uh, or some green beans, something like that, uh, or just have it on its own with a chicken thigh and the spinach would be a nice light dinner, uh, but very filling and satisfying. So I hope you liked this video. I hope you found some use out of it and that you'll try this at your next uh, party or family dinner. If you've enjoyed the video, I'd definitely appreciate a like. If you prefer to see more of these and you want to know when I put new videos out, please subscribe and click the bell. But in the meantime, stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video.